I just want to talk for a few minutes tonight. Um, kind of surprised me when I got the message today, but hey, you know, it is what it is. Hands up, right? So uh, anyway, uh, Dad asked me if I wouldn't mind covering tonight, and I'm going to do my best, you know what I mean? Um, but one thing that happened today, I take a lot of these things from work because that's what I know. I, I, I get up, I go to work, I come home. I go to bed, I get up, I go to work, that's my life, you know what I mean? So that's where I get my exposure to the outside. Well, anyway, what I'd like to talk to us tonight is about situations and circumstance, okay? So the thing is, <clears throat> this morning there was a big conversation going on in the control room. Now the way that the control room is situated, my office has a door that opens up into the control room. So does the production manager and the technical lead. So anyway, I'm in there, and they're just, everybody's, yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody's all kinds of conjecture and all kinds of what if, what if, what if with this whole situation with, with Israel and Hamas right now. And, you know, I'm letting them talk, and I'm telling you, there's some crackpot conspiracy stuff going on, and this one, oh, well, this one's doing this, and this one's pulling the strings, and blah, 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 blah. Well, one of the guys made the mistake, I guess, you could call it that, made the mistake of asking me my opinion on it. I told him, I said, well, let me tell you. I said, this is a battle that has been going on for thousands of years. I said, now, if Israel had done what was the right thing to do in the first place, we wouldn't be dealing with this, okay? But it is what it is, and this is how things are. You can't have one without the other, you know? And I explained to them that all of the hand-wringing and pearl-clutching and what if and, oh, well, if this one had done and this one did none of that's going to change anything. And I had to explain to them that the Father's got all of this in his hand, every bit of it. All the situation that's going on right now, like I said, there's, you know, Solomon told us there's nothing new under the sun, right? So they were fighting back then. They're fighting today, right? Do y'all remember when the angel was talking about Ishmael, right? Talking about Esau, the, 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 he's going to be a wild man. And his hand would be against his brothers, and his brothers would be against him. And it was ju it's just, we can't do anything outside of what the Father's will is. And the Father's will is going to happen whether we want it to or not. At one time, we had a guy that was coming. He was visiting us. And he legitimately believed that he could pray away the tribulation. You know, that as long as he was, you know, oh, we can. Yeah, and that's, that's the thing. He, he thought that he, could, that he could pray and change all the things that were going on in the Holy Land. Well, I got news for you. If the Father has written it down, right? If the Father's written it down, we know two things. Well, I kind of think they're the same thing, but Dad has two things. But it can't be changed. Once it's written, it cannot be changed. Okay? So all of the worry and, the again, the hand-wringing and the pearl-clutching and the what if, what if, what if, None of that's going to change anything. And I explained to these gentlemen this morning, I said, look, the Bible tells us that you can't change the color of one hair on your head, right? You can't change the, hair, the, the color of one hair on your head, right? You can't make yourself any taller. You can't make yourself any shorter. You can't add any inches to your height. There's nothing you can do, right? The Scriptures tell us that forever... His word is settled where? In heaven, right? What did the Messiah say? The Messiah said, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You see? So there's nothing that we can do other than trust him. And I asked them, I said, you, and, and I'm talking to four or five guys. I said, every one of you professes to be a, a Christian, correct? Oh, yeah, 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 man. Well, yeah, yeah. 
Well, you wouldn't know it by their actions every day, but I'm not casting aspersions on anybody. But, you know, all I know is the scriptures say you know a tree by the fruit that it bears, right? And if, you, if your fruit's rotten, then your tree's rotten. But that's a whole other story. But I, I, I told them, I said, every one of you guys professes to be a Christian, professes to be a believer, right? I said, where is your faith? Where is it? Because you're all over here trying to, oh, well, if this one did, da, 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 and this is the, it's the end of the world. I mean, you, Yahushua told him, he said, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives you, not as the world gives, give I unto you, you know what I mean? So I told him, I said, if you had the faith that you profess to, to have, then you would be, you wouldn't be worried in this situation. And if you were as settled in your heart with your walk, y'all wouldn't be worried about the what ifs because if we do end up going, if something happened, if there was a missile or a whatever, or however, right? That's what we call the what? We call that the quick trip, right? All right? And the thing is, we all want to do what? Everybody wants to go to heaven, but they don't want to go tonight. You know what I'm saying? So the thing is, it's like, if you had the faith that you profess to have, you would be able to say, hey, yeah, it's a scary situation. But there's nothing I can do to change it. Right? What do we all have control over? When it comes to these types of things, what do we have control over? We only have control over our reactions. We only have control over ourselves or our houses, right? And, and you know, men, we have, we're supposed to be the spiritual leaders in the house, right? So we have, we should have control over what um, the mood is and what the reactions are and, and all of that. So we have to be that tower of strength, if you will. You know, we have to walk it out so that people see it. But I told them, I said, if your faith is where it's supposed where it should be, you'd realize you can't change what he's doing. You can't change his word. None of us can. It doesn't matter how much you pray. It's just like people praying over a ham sandwich. Right? You can't take what Yahweh, exactly. You can't take what Yahweh's cursed and bless it and make it clean. You can't take an unclean creature and make it into a clean one. It doesn't mean you can pray until the cows come home and you're not going to change anything. You see what I'm saying? You're not going to change it. And you can't. None of us has that authority. Now, over the years, people have changed certain things. I'm talking about the day and holidays. And the name, changed it for titles and things like that. See, so people have changed these things, but that doesn't, that doesn't change his word. Amen? There's nothing that we can do to change what he has written. Okay? <clears throat> so, a lot of times, in our day-to-day -day situation, we come up against a lot of things. Some things look hopeless, right? Have we all been there before? Sure we have. We've all come up against what we consider hopeless situations, all right? But the Scriptures tells us that he knows, you know, he knows what's going on. He's got it all under control. He already knows. And that actually the Father even has hopes too. Right? What is his hopes for us? A, that we accept his son. Right? B, that we are reconciled back to him. But it also says that he gives us an expected end. Right? So that word expected, that's one of those words that has changed over the centuries. Right? When we read it in the, in the, in the King James, we see an expected end. 
And that doesn't really make much sense to us. But look at it this way. The word that's being translated as expected means a hopeful end or an end that is hoped for, okay? So that's the thing. He knows what he wants for us. It just seems like we're the ones who don't know what we want for ourselves. Do we want to follow him, or do we want to do our own thing? Do we want to walk in, you know, blessed assurance, or do we want to be tossed to and fro with every wind and weight of doctrine? What do we want? What do we want to do? We know what he wants for us, right? So the thing is, do we walk in his, in, in, do we walk in, in faith in him and in the blood of his son? Or do we walk in what we cook up in this pea brain that we've got here, in the bad brain, right? Do we, do we walk after what we cook up in the bad brain? All the worrying in the world ain't going to change a thing. All it's going to do is make your hair fall out, make you sick, give you the H. pylori, do all of these kind That's what it does. Everybody's got the H. pylori, right? But when you have stress, it makes, their, it makes the habitat much more uh, conducive to growth. Yes, fertile is a good word as well, but it makes it much more much more conducive to them growing and causing problems. It's where ulcers come from, right? So the point is, when we worry about, worry is not a good thing for us. It's not a natural state for us. These bodies aren't made for that, right? I know of where I speak. I've, lived, I've been a worrier my entire life. When I was a little child, I worried about everything. Couldn't keep nothing down because I was constantly worried about something. You know what I'm saying? And it's just in the past couple of years that I realized I'm 53 years old now. It's just in the past couple of years that I realized that didn't get me nowhere. Half a century I lived that way, and it didn't get me nowhere. So how about, and this is how my brain works, well, that didn't work. It's like Dad says, when we talk about failure, all right, I was a failure at letting things go, right? A little bit of control issue I have here. I come by it honestly, and I'm not looking. I'm not looking at anybody. But the thing is, I lived 51 years, 50, 51 years, one way, right? So after a while, I said, "This ain't getting it. All it's doing is making me crazy." I said, how about I just quit worrying about it, and I let it happen, and whatever happens, we deal with it, right? He said, I will never leave you, and I will never forsake you, right? So if he's never left us, he's never forsaken us, his promises have never failed, he's never missed it one time in the thousands of years. Right? So what makes me think he's going to start now? So the point is, it doesn't matter what our situation is. It doesn't matter what our circumstance is. He's bigger than all those things. Okay? doesn't matter what we're looking at. You get a thing from the doctor that says, you're going to, you know, you got this disease, you got that. Okay, we deal with it. Right? But the one thing we cannot do is just curl up and and let that let that own us. We cannot do that. Because when we do that, then we become what the scriptures call an unprofitable servant. When I'm so consumed about my situation and my circumstance, what am I looking at? I'm looking at me. And when I look at me, who have I taken my eyes off of? I've taken my eyes off of Yahweh. I've taken my eyes off of Yahushua. When that happens, I am completely out of control in the situation. 
Where does my control over the situation come from? It comes from him, letting him have it. This may sound counterintuitive. It may. But when I release the control over the situation and the circumstance, regardless of how dour or how dire it looks, when I release, when I release the control over it, and give it to him, I actually have it in control. Does this make sense to anybody? Because all the worrying in the world ain't going to change a thing. My little bit of whatever I got here, that ain't going to change nothing. But when I take it and I give it to him, and I say, Father, this is too big for me. You take it. You handle it. You fix it. When I do that, then I actually have control. Right? We talk about, do you want to, when, when it talks about, you know, we all have an a, a, a end that we're headed to, right? Okay? So do you want to choose how, it's, how you start and not have any control of where you show, end up? Or would you rather not have any control of how you how it starts, but make it to the to the finish line where you want to be? Amen. That's what we want, right? So when I take it and I give it to him, I'm relinquishing all semblance of saying, I got this. And I'm gonna go this way and go that way, and da 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 da. Because when I pick that. I have no say over where I end up at. You see how this works? It even works in everyday stuff. If I take it and give it to him, and I say, Father, this is too big. When I take my eyes off of me, and whatever the, the issue is, when I take my eyes off of that, and I hand it to him, then my eyes are in the right place. When did Peter start to sink? When he took his eyes off of Yahushua. When he took his eyes off the problem solver. When he took his eyes off the, the one who calms the storms. When he took his eyes off the one who has it all under control. That's when he began to sink. Because what did he do? He saw what was going on around him. He saw the situation. As, I bet he thought to himself, what in the world am I? I'm out here. I'm walking on water. There's storms and waves. What in the world am I doing? Yeah, what was I thinking? What did my bad brain get me into? Okay. But that's the thing. We got that. The Bible tells us that all of these things were written for us as examples. It uses two different words in different places. Examples and in samples. Same thing. Okay. But the Bible says that all of these things were written as examples for us. Okay, what is an example? An example is a pattern that you can learn from. You can say, I'm in this very situation right here. So what happened? I look at Peter. He took his eyes off of, of Yahushua. What happened? Oh, I'm getting low. I'm getting low. It's getting wet. Well, that lets me know, hey, if you keep your eyes, and what did Yahushua ask him before we move on? What did he say? He said, why did you doubt? Right? He said, oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? So the point is, if I get my eyes off the situation and keep them on the one who is the problem solver, then, then he's got it. And I can stay walking, Right? I'm not seeing the waves and the wind and all that stuff. And everybody's situation is different. What may seem like a huge thing for Chris may not be nothing for Brother Tommy. Right? And what may seem like a huge thing for Elisha may not be nothing for Sister Shelby. And so on and so forth. But we all look at things differently. We do. We all look at things different because we all have different 
we're all in different stages of life. We have, you know, I mean, there's so many um, variables in each person's life. But the thing that we have to remember is, number one, there is no situation or circumstance that is too big for him. None. Right? He made a planet that 8 billion plus of us are living on right now. Right? And every day, the planet keeps on ticking, keeps on doing what it's doing. Right? And we're, these ones are running over here doing this, and these ones are doing that, blah, 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 blah. But the Bible tells us that he knows that even if the sparrow falls out of its nest, he knows. Amen? He knows when the sparrow falls out of its nest. He knows, he said that the very number, uh, the very ha hairs on your head are numbered. Right? So if he knows all of that, I guarantee you that he knows your situation. And I guarantee he knows the answer to it. Y'all have heard me say this time and time and time again. But I'm going to say it one more time because it bears mentioning. When it comes to the things in our lives, regardless of what they are, we have got to learn to get out of the way. We have got to learn to get out of the way. And for some of us, that's an unnatural thing. Some of us have had to rely on ourselves for so long. Right? But it's just like the old song in the church said, I know a man who can. He can take care of it. But you got to turn it around. You got to let go of it. You can't keep holding on to it and expect him to fix it. Right? We got a that there's a reason for this um in the scriptures, you know, in, in the Tanakh, in the Torah, it talks about all these different there were sacrifices for everything, wasn't there? Different types of sacrifices for different things. Your Ola, right? Your whole burnt offering, you know, and there was a sin offering and there was a Thanksgiving offering and a peace offering and so many different offerings. But what do they all have in common? The priest couldn't use it if you didn't let go. Does that make sense? But where do I get this from? Where did this isn't just something I just dreamed of? It comes from the pattern. What's the pattern? You can't, it's not a sacrifice unless you give it up. Unless you give it to the priest. Amen? And that means your financial worries. That means your health concerns. That means your friends, your family, you know, what's going on with what you see on the news, all these things. That, all, you got to let go of it. Because I promise you, if you dwell on it, all it's going to do is weigh you down. And it's going to beat you down. It's going to make you sick. And Dad, it's like that guy that had that bag on his back. You know what I mean? We talk about some things that some of y'all don't know thing, you know, don't know about, you know what I mean? But we're talking, you know, some of us do. You know, and you got a guy, dad had a picture one day and it was this guy. Well, it was like a little skit that he was doing. He had a, a trash bag, big black trash bag. And on this bag, it had like all these different things, you know, cares of the world and this and that and all, you know what I mean? All the, and man, I mean, he just, oh, I just can't make it another step. I can't, you know. Well, then another fellow shows up and he says, hey, what you got in that bag? Oh, I got my cares and my woes and my worries and my troubles and all this. And the guy says, tell you what, let me take that. No, 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 these are mine, I got it. Tell you what, let me take it for you. Let me help you. So the man takes the bag and what happens? Now this man that was hunched over, now he's doing what? He kind of, oh man, that's, that's a whole lot better. You know, and he said, friend, you go on up ahead. I, I'll, I'll take care of this for you. And now that man, he's high stepping now, right? Because he ain't weighed down with all that stuff. Well, if we want to be the same way, we got to turn it loose. 
we got to turn these things loose. My biggest problem, like I said, having lived the life that I lived, okay, being concerned, worried about every you know I mean? All that fear that I lived under for so long, half a century of living my life in fear, and where did it get me? Nowhere. Give me high blood pressure. <laughs> give me, give me the bad brain. You know what I mean? But just it didn't, it didn't do any good. And you would have thought. I like to think I'm a fairly intelligent person. You would have thought that it would have kind of made sense. Hey, if this ain't working, let's do something different. But it didn't. <laughs> it's like that. You know what I mean? It's like the, what, the the person that goes to the doctor and says, "Doctor, my arm hurts when I do this." And the doctor said, "Well, don't do that." And then, <laughs> then it won't hurt. But that's the thing. Grew up in a church. Cut my teeth on a church pew. You know what I mean? Know the word, but couldn't put it into play in my own life. The lessons that I had learned, I couldn't put into play because they weren't real to me. You see? Still thinking about me being the center of the universe, being the center of the Solar system, as it were. But like I said, you think that all these planets that's in the solar, do you think that any of them is given a fault? Oh, well, I better go on this course. I better do this. I better. No. Because they just do what they do. Right? There's nobody out there with a rocket ship piloting on that planet around. Just does what it's supposed to do. And that's what we need to be doing, okay? Instead of trying to drive everything our own self. Like that old book, I never understood it. D.O.D. is my co-pilot. You better let him be the pilot, and you better just be the, you better be back there, yeah, be the passenger, right? Don't even be the steward, it's just be the passenger, all right? But you let him fly the ship. Let him pilot the ship. Let him do it. Okay? And then that way you'll end up at the destination you're supposed to be at. And that's the thing, y'all. We've got to remember, he has, he loves us. And he has, he has a, a, an expectation for us. He has a place for us. He wants us to be with him. Right? Scriptures say that we'll rule and reign with, you know what I mean, with him. Calls us joint heirs. Right? And he wants that. But if we don't let him pilot the, the ship, how far are we going to be off? Right? We talk about course correction, right? You see it all the time when you're doing construction work or whatever. You get off an eighth of an inch over here, and 20 feet down the way, you're off two and a half inches. I'm using that. That's an extreme example. But what my point is, you're, you're, you're not on target. And, and you end up missing it. Then you got to do a bunch of other stuff to try and fix it. And then it never looks right. That's why I don't do carpentry work. I have these grand schemes and I say, oh man, this is going to look so good. And when I get done, no, it does not look good. It, that's why I don't do it. But the point is, like I said, let's let him have the situation, the circumstance. Right? And instead of ruminating, uh, oh, poor pitiful me, I got this situation going on, I got this, I got that, what should we do? Some hands up, right? What does it say, Dad? Surrender takes the pain out of sacrifice, out of suffering. Put the hands up, right? When you're faced with a situation that you have no answer to, put your hands up. Just surrender it right then. Because you ain't going to do nothing but mess it up. When you're in a situation that you don't understand, put your hands up. Give it to him. Because you don't understand it, but I guarantee you he does. 
Right? Was just, he said that he that he uh, that he left it up to him who judges righteously. Okay, he understands. He knows. He knows the answer. Scriptures say that he he knows what you need before you even ask for uh, about it. Okay, he's got the answer. So do yourself a favor. Let him have it. And the more confusing, the more the more scary it is, the sooner you need to let him have it. I don't know what's coming around the corner, right? I don't know what's coming around the corner, but he does. So I can let him have it. And that takes a lot of weight off of me. Because then all I got to do is just live and breathe and trust him and walk in his promises, knowing that the blood of his son, Yahushua, has covered all this stuff. He sees the blood. That's his reminder. Okay? Because remember, remember, you know, and we've seen it a lot of times in Scripture. Sometimes the the prophet or whoever was dealing with Yahweh at the time, a lot of times they would say, well, and Moses did it a lot, right? Look, remember what you said. Father doesn't forget. Sometimes he just wants to make sure that you're paying attention. You said that you'd get this people to a promised land. If you don't do it, all the rest of these folks around him are going to say, was he not powerful enough to get them that you... You see what I'm saying? He don't forget what he said. But I'm convinced that sometimes he kind of acts like it to see if we recall. Were we listening? Did we take that to heart? Are we relying on it? Well, I mean, that's the thing. He said that he would do it. So that's what we need to walk in. Right? Again, we don't have, we don't choose, we choose the end. What's the end? What's the, what, what's the end that we choose? Crossing the finish line. Being an overcomer. Right? Right? Making it to the kingdom. That's the end that we choose. But we have no say over how he gets us. And that's what we have. We can't, you can't have your cake and eat it too. Right? But to me, like I said, you know, it, it's tough sometimes. You look at it and you say, man, how in the world am I going to get out from under this? You know? Well, that's the time when you need to just put it on him. Give it up right then. Keep it in your mind. And the reason why you want to keep it in your mind is so that when he does fix it, you don't become ungrateful. And when he does come through, please, 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 please be careful to give him the glory for it. Give him the glory for it. Right? Scripture say that he inhabits the what? The praise of his people. So give him the glory for it. Scriptures tell us that the, the workman is worthy of his hire. That, that extends to the Father, too. Because when he does something, does he not deserve the thanks and the gratitude for it? Of course he does. Hmm? When he doesn't what? There's a reason for that. Because it may not be time for that yet. Okay? You know, we just don't see it. Right? There's, there's, we can go into this at another time. But there's sometimes, he, when you ask for something, sometimes he says yes. Sometimes he says no. Sometimes he says yeah, but not now. Okay? And sometimes he says yeah, I can do that, but you got to fix some things first. You see what I'm saying? So even when it seems like he's not there, he is still working in the background. Okay? Think about this. This is something that Dad taught me years and years and years ago. 
And like I said, over the past few years, I've had kind of a reawakening because my mind has opened up and it, there's been a lot more things have become so much more real for me. Okay? A couple of years ago, when Dad asked me to step in for him out here, it was not the same caliber of what just happened this past few months. Amen? I'd like to think that it was much better, that this was much better than how, how you know, how I would do when, you know. But the point is, it's just like I said. If we get out of the way, we let him handle it, then it's okay. I don't have to have control over it because he has it. Right? So that's all I'm trying to tell us. Based on the situation and the circumstances, those are nothing but hurdles to see how we're going to handle it. What are we going to do? Are we going to rely on him? Or are we going to try to fix it ourselves? Yeah. How are we going to take on this situation? Well, I think it's a whole lot better to give it to him than to try and fix it myself because I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. So I say, okay, Father, you take it. Because you know what to do. Amen. And I honestly think that we find that we'd be in a much better situation. Certainly have a lot less worry in our life. Because there are some things that we just are out of our control. Exactly. Like Dad said, it's above our pay grade. So, like I said, let's remember that when it comes to our everyday, there ain't nothing out there that's bigger than he is. Ain't no bill, right? Ain't no health concern. Ain't no nothing that's bigger than he is. Okay? What I'm trying to tell you is, and this is where I was originally going. If I'm trying to work on the problem, what's he doing? He's resting. He's like, I'm going to, it's like in the scripture where it says, I'm going to go back to my place, right? And I'm going to wait, right? So I'm going to go to my place and I'm going to wait until their power is all gone. Right? But if I'm working on it, if I'm monkeying with it, if I can't leave it alone, he's sitting over there like this. He's like, I'll wait. I got all the time in the world. But if I turn it over to him and I'm not fooling with it, Guess what he's doing? He's working. When we're working, he's resting. When we're resting, he's working. Let him work on the problem. Amen? It's simple. I'm not saying we're not mindful of it. But we need to learn to let it go. What you got? It's especially important to let him work on the problem when we are the problem. Oh, yeah, And we yeah. don't often see that. No, I mean, and that's a very succinct statement. We can be the problem, and you've yes. got to step out of the way and let him work on it. That's what I was saying. We need to get out of the way. You're absolutely right. Nine times out of ten, we are the problem. Whether it's a, you know, whatever. But nine times that we're the problem. Sometimes he don't work as fast as what we want. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes he don't work as fast as we want him to. But in that situation, who's the problem? I am. 
not him. He makes all things beautiful when? In his time. Right? So he's going to make that situation beautiful. Right? He's going to make me beautiful. He's going to make my problem something beautiful. He's going to take that and he'll fix it, but it's in his time. The most important thing is that we give it to him. Yes, if. Um, so, yeah, um, before I left that that situation that I was in, um, you had basically told me that um, I wasn't going to leave until I learned um, the things that, that he wanted me to learn. And, um, you know, I prayed for like a year or something almost for for me to be able to get out of that situation. That prayer was not answered in the whole year until I, who was the with the problem, um, in some cases, um, um, had to get out of the way and let Yahuwah work on me. And then once that happened, then he answered my prayer. I agree with you in all but one thing. We're always the problem. It's not some situations. It's every situation. That's I'm just saying, that's 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 what we do. We get in the we get in the way. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, I wasn't being critical, sis. I just I'm just I'm picking with you. My point is we are always the root of our own problem. You know? But that goes along with what I just said just a few minutes ago. Something he told you what? You're you're gonna get moved out of it, but not until okay, so that's what I said. If that's a situation or that's a that's a case of yes, but we gotta fix this for we gotta get this out of the way first. You know what I mean? Sometimes he just says yes, and that's a miracle. Sometimes he says no, and he says no because it's not in our best interest. But a lot of times it's like, okay, we'll do that, but how many times in the scriptures did he allow some a prayer to happen? And then they were like, oh my gosh, well, this was a terrible idea. You're the one, you're the one who wanted it. Your idea, right? You know, that that was that was what you wanted. In that case, they chose the beginning, not the end. Right? So again, let's choose the end. Let's choose to be overcomers. Let's choose to endure and cross the finish line. Let's do that. Right? Give it to him. Whatever it is. Whatever you're facing. Give it to him. Let him have it. Because he's going to start moving things around. You have no control on how it starts. But you know where you want to end up. And the surest way to end up crossing that finish line is to get away from it. I don't want to sink out there in that sea of Galilee. You know what I mean? So let's not take our eyes off of him. All right? Scripture says, praise him from whom all blessings flow. So, like I said, have my name in there. I can't fix it. I'm a man. So, like I said, I'm going to fail. I'm going to make mistakes. But I got I learned from those things, right? But anyway, that's all I wanted to say. A lot of us got, we, we all got situations and circumstances going on right now. Okay? But I know in whom I've trusted. And though it's not easy for me, I can say, Father, you can have it. You, you, here, you take this. I don't want it. You take this. I don't like it. I don't want you take this. Okay? And let him handle it. And I think we'll be a whole lot better off. Amen? All right. Well, that's going to be my little message for tonight, if you want to call it that. Like I said, I don't have the, I don't have the computer that Rabbi has. I don't have the numbers and the books and the chapters and verse. I don't have that. I don't. 
just know what it says. I just don't, but I don't have the, I don't have the recall. But anyway, we love you and appreciate you.